Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I am Chad. I am the reseller Rockefeller on YouTube. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about my adventure to the flea market yesterday. Today is December the 15th. It is Sunday and uh, yesterday I decided to go to the flea market. I'm a reseller, but I usually typically kind of stay away from flea markets for the most part. And uh, that's just something, you know, it, it takes a lot more time to go to a flea market. There's not really that many flea markets really close by. Typically, it's just not something that I do, but I decided yesterday to go to the flea market to see if I could actually find anything to resell. It turned out to be actually a really good day. Uh, the weather was beautiful. There was tons of people out shopping. There was a lot of vendors. And I actually got an opportunity to buy some pretty good stuff. I mean, I didn't hit any really big home runs. I didn't find any kind of silver, any gold, or anything like that, which is typical of a flea market. I don't ever expect to find that kind of stuff unless you're willing to pay up. Now, if you're just shopping and you want to buy some silver or you want to buy some gold for your personal use, then yeah, you can find that stuff all day long at flea markets. But for the most part, as a reseller, I typically don't even think about gold and silver. If I do see a very unique piece, then I will pick it up, but I'll have to pay up for that item. So before we jump into the haul video uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about the difference between like a yard sale uh, versus, you know, the flea market. So for all of you that are new to reselling, you know, if you go to a garage sale or a yard sale, you're actually buying stuff from people, most likely families, that are actually motivated to get rid of the items. There's a reason that they're having a garage sale. I've talked about this in previous videos. Most people that have a garage sale, uh, they are typically cleaning out you know, maybe a garage or they're just getting rid of some unwanted items, things that they don't use, things that they don't want. And that's the reason behind them you know, having a garage sale. So they're very motivated to get rid of those items. They're ready to get rid of the items. That's why you can find extremely good deals. And most of the times, people don't have yard sales or garage sales all the time. So when they, when they do decide to have a garage sale, they don't realize that it's a lot of work. They don't realize that you know people are gonna show up at the butt crack of dawn. They don't realize all of these things. So it causes them to be in a rush. How many of you out there uh, can, can relate to pulling up to a garage sale and seeing how panicky the people are. Some people, they're very, you know, organized. They have everything out the night before and they have everything in, you know, planned out perfectly. But most of the times, they're running around. They're trying to unpack items. They don't know the prices of items. They, they're dealing with tons and tons of people asking questions. It's very... Uh, you know, different than in an environment at a flea market, right? So there's a huge difference between a garage sale and a flea market just, uh, you know, based on some simple principles of the flea market person that's selling an item is typically just somebody that's reselling. These people either bought and purchased these items elsewhere, elsewhere and they're looking to, you know, make a profit on the item and resell it to people that's shopping. Uh, and at a garage sale, you're typically not going to find that. Those people are usually just getting rid of items because they need to. So there's a big difference in why they're getting rid of the items. And that can benefit you as a reseller. Because if you don't really understand that before you go to a flea market, you might find yourself in a situation to where you're, you're walking around, you're not able to find any good deals, everybody's asking too much for their items. And that's very typical. But you have to come prepared. You have to know that these people are resellers. You have to know that they're not really motivated to get rid of the item per se because they're reselling. They bought the item. They own the item. They want the item. They're trying to make money with that item. So you have to kind of approach the situation from a different angle. And the different angle is, you know, being that buyer that is a better negotiator. Being the buyer that understands how to bundle items or understands how to do quick math. People that are in the reselling business should understand that negotiating is pretty much one of the biggest things and one of the most important things at the top of the list that, you know, you can use in your benefit. Especially if you're the type of reseller that goes to, you know, yard sales, flea markets, thrift stores, not, well, not too much thrift stores, but, you know, estate sales, uh, you know, doing private picks off of like Facebook or going uh, to someone's home and picking their garage or meeting somebody that's trying to say, there's negotiation in every deal, right? Well, there should be, 
but lots of resellers don't negotiate. There's tons of resellers that simply will not negotiate. They don't really care to negotiate. They don't know how to negotiate. And therefore, they're always getting the short end of the stick. They're always paying a lot more than what they should be paying and a lot more than what other resellers like myself would pay for that item. And so their profit margins are much, much smaller. So what I'm trying to say is when you go to a flea market, you got to be prepared to negotiate. You have to be mentally ready to battle with that seller over an item. And some people think that's being rude or upsetting. You know, it's, it's not. That's what these people like. Most people that are selling at flea markets actually kind of like to haggle. Now, every now and then you will come into contact with that seller that just doesn't like to haggle. They don't want to negotiate. They're rude. They're upset. But you have to understand that they have been out there in the sun. They're hot. They're tired. They're not making any money. And use that to your advantage. If you see that somebody isn't really busy, they're not selling a lot of items, uh, maybe you hear them say, man, today's been dead. I haven't sold anything. Please come buy something. Immediately when, when sellers say that to me, it's like a light bulb goes off in the top of my head. I immediately know that I'm going to be able to capitalize on that. You see what I'm saying? So hopefully that makes sense to you out there. Uh, I'm going to show you some items that I picked up yesterday. We're going to talk a little bit about those items. I'll share what I paid for the item, why I bought the item. If I have a good idea of what the item should sell for, I'll definitely let you know. But for right now, let's jump into this and let's start with the smallest items first, which is a bunch of vintage uh, hats I bought from a guy, uh, a fellow reseller. He told me he was a reseller. He told me uh, that he buys storage units which uh, sometimes that, that's actually good. These people are usually looking for high-end items, gold, silver, uh, you know, things of that nature. They're guns, money. Uh, they're not really typically too worried about the smaller items, and they don't really care to look those items up. So you can definitely sometimes find really good items from people that do storage units. I'm actually going to be making a video about people that buy and sell storage units later on down the road. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let's jump right into it. Let's walk over here and I'll show you these hats. These are all of the hats that I just picked up. So I got all together. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So I got 24 hats all together. I think when I first walked up to the table, I can't remember if he said a dollar or 50 cent each. Um, I want to say he said a dollar each, but I'm not 100% sure. So I ended up uh, trying to work out a deal for all of the hats. I think he might have had 50, maybe 55, 60 hats. But he just wanted a little too much. I didn't really want to spend that much money on all of the hats. So I said, okay, what about if I just, you know, kind of pick out what hats I want? Would you do me a deal if I bought more? If I bought more than like five or ten? And he said, yeah, I'll give you a really good deal if you get together a good pile. This is obviously, uh, you know, a really good no negotiating uh, tactic that you can use. You can use this tactic at yard sales, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores. It doesn't really matter. This is like a very common tactic for any reseller. So uh, anyways, let's go through some of these hats. Um, I got some pretty cool ones. Like this one I think is a really cool hat. This is a uh, country Chevrolet and it's uh, Benton, Kentucky. It says Chevy, Pontiac, Olds, Buick, GMC trucks. It is a uh, strap back and uh, it's made by this company here. Hopefully you're going to be able to see this. And hopefully the audio quality is good too. My mic is aiming down. But yeah, it's in really good condition. Um, it looks like it's made, yeah, it's, it's like a wool, um, it's a wool blend. So yeah, it's a really cool hat. This should sell really good. Um, it's in really good condition. Next one I got is uh, this one. It's like corduroy, uh, made in the USA. And uh, this one says Super Chevy show now this is a really cool hat i actually like this hat a lot if i was a hat person i probably would keep this one but uh, it's in really good condition you can definitely see that it's been sitting for a while but everything appears to be in really good condition it even has i forget what they call this but it's like the in the interior flap to make sure that this stays nice and straight but yeah that's a really cool hat Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. So total, after I put together the uh, the pile, 
I think he ended up saying like 15 bucks. So what did I say? 24. So I mean, I'm way less than a dollar each on these. Um, and that's, that's really where I want to be. I want to be at like, you know, a dollar each, 50 cent each. Uh, this is a Porsche. I think this part is some type of synthetic material. Um, it doesn't say the material. It kind of feels like wool a little bit. Uh, this is kind of like a leathery material, like a suede leather. But yeah, this is a really cool hat. It's uh, got a little bit of age on it, not too old. But uh, yeah, it says Porsche on it. Got an old trucker. If you can't run with the big dogs, stay on the porch. That's a pretty common uh, slogan on t-shirts and stuff. But I figured that was a really cool trucker snapback. Somebody will buy this. Next one I got is this Daytona International Speedway. I find these hats all the time um, here in Florida. This one uh, isn't that old. Made in Taiwan. 100% cotton. But, you know, NASCAR stuff, ex especially, you know, things like this with the graphics and stuff uh, and streetwear and stuff like that. It's becoming real popular. People uh, are wearing, you know, NASCAR stuff more and more these days. Uh, this one, New York Yankees. You can tell that this one was used a little bit. It's definitely still pretty clean and pretty straight, but uh, you can tell it was definitely used. It is uh, uh, Twins, Boston, Massachusetts, 100% polyester, medium large, made in Korea, official licensed. Pretty cool hat, probably, you know, not worth that much. Uh, this one's really cool. I like this one as well. This is just a yellow. Uh, it's a pretty bright yellow Chevrolet patch on the front. And uh, polyester, made in Korea. Pretty cool hat, though. I think this one should bring, you know, a decent amount of money. None of these hats are home runs, but they're all cool. And hats sell really good, and they're easy to pack and ship. They're lightweight, and uh, they take up hardly any room if you store them the correct way. So anyways, uh, this one's pretty cool. It's got some really nice graphics. got the yellow little rope thing across it. This is a uh, strap on the back. Imperial Caps Denver. Not really sure, you know, what this one will bring. It definitely has a little bit of, you know, patina and wear on it. It looks like it must have set on a shelf or something because the back is really clean and the front has like a, a dingy, faded uh, look to it. But maybe I'll be able to get something for it. This one is just a plain corduroy. Um, this one is a strap with this little, it's got like a little clip on it. Not really sure exactly what you would call this one. I guess a strap back. Um, this one's made by that Odo comp Cap Company. But uh, yeah, pretty cool little uh, corduroy hat. I got another Porsche one here. I didn't realize that I had two of these. Got some more NASCAR number three. And this one's Chase uh, Racewear. Pretty good condition overall on the outside. Pretty good graphics, clean on the front. Nice uh, brim, not bent or creased. Got this one. Uh, this feels like a like a sweater kind of. It actually has that sweater material. Alabama local crew. Not really sure what that means, but this one is uh, street, uh, screen stars. Actually, I didn't see that it has a problem right there with a little bit of. Uh, little bit of stain I might try to wash it and get that out or I might just try to put some stain remover and get that out but yeah this is a uh, screen stars uh, best made in the USA one size fits all snapback trucker that's pretty cool like this hat this one I'm gonna have to uh, talk to a friend of mine I have a really good friend that's from Alabama that might want this hat got this one it's got the uh, suede leather Universal Studios pretty cool brand new with tags uh, not too special, but maybe it'll bring a couple of dollars. Got this one, Crown of St. Louis Trucker. And uh, yeah, you know, anytime that I come across, you know, hats, I don't mind buying a few of them, right? Because that's, you're going to get the best deal. If I would have bought maybe five, ten hats, I would have paid the same price as I uh, paid for all of the hats. So, it's best to try to bundle them up, even if you're getting some that are, you know, some hats that are not really worth that much. It's best to try to bundle hats up because the more you take, the cheaper it's going to be. Uh, Western, uh, Pace Setters, I'm going to have to look that up, see what company that is. Funk Cap, large, made in the USA. That's pretty cool. It's got some nice, you know, cool graphics and, and, and a logo right there. Hawaii! This one's pretty cool. It's got the uh, the plastic strap, and uh, this one's made by Derby Cap, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. 
Derby cap. I, I, I think I've seen this before, but I'm not 100% sure. Derby cap. Huh. Let me know down in the comment section if any of you uh, know this company, Derby Cap. I don't think I've ever seen that name before, but that's a pretty cool hat. I like the way it has the, the black line across the bill. I like the way that that is, you know, displayed and it's got the colors. Hawaii, it's yellow, it's bright, it stands out, it pops. Now this one, I'm not really sure exactly what this is. I'm mm, probably Marines, I'm guessing. Not 100% sure. Definitely old. Uh, it's got like a paper tag that says L on it, so I'm guessing that stands for large. It's in pretty rough condition. It's got some some dust and stuff, and it looks like it has a some little itty bitty paint specks. Maybe somebody wore it when they were using like a paint sprayer. But all in all, pretty cool hat. I'm not really sure how old something like this is. I'm gonna have to look it up and see. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that stands for Marine Corps. Uh, if you know what that actually stands for and i'm wrong go ahead and correct me down in the comment section below move on to the next one got this chevron hat i actually just sold a hat just like this literally almost identical but it was in a little worse condition this one actually appears to be like new um yes it's not formed correctly it has a nice crease right here but overall this looks like new old stock it doesn't look like it's ever been worn um the brim, though, is in pretty rough condition. I can feel if I go to bend it, it's going to, like, break or crack. I think this probably they used uh, some type of plastic material, um, which sucks. But overall, it's really nice, really clean Chevron hat. Got this one. Uh, this one says, sign a sign a chi. I'm not really sure. Sign a chi. That's, that's pretty much what it says. I don't know what that means. I don't know. Pretty cool little hat. It's got the same kind of uh, little clasp or buckle thing that that other corduroy hat had. So, yep, that's another cool one. Um, this one, I have no clue what this is. It says 38 Special Tour 95. So, I'm going to have to look up and see what 38 Special is. But, uh, Tour 95. Pretty weird. It's uh, made by Casey. That's a pretty common hat maker. I see that all the time. But, it's in pretty good condition. It's kind of like an off-white color. But I'm going to have to look this up to see if this holds any value uh, or who this actually is. 38 Special, never heard of them. It does say Tour 95, so maybe that's uh, some kind of music group. All right, then I got this one. It says Hawaii Police. This one's pretty cool. Um, it's not in the best condition, but it's definitely not in the worst condition. And it says uh, Designer Award Cap, Medium Large. Uh, pretty cool, Trucker, Hawaii Police. Pretty cool hat. Then I got this one, uh, St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Really nice patch. Green trucker. And this one is made by Pennant Winter. Uh, let's see, 50% cotton, nylon, one size fits all. Got some pretty, pretty good uh, sweatband, clean. Pretty cool hat. This one's really nice. This is Corduroy uh, Winter Place. Not sure what that is or what that means. It might have uh, been a business or something. But uh, really nice. Uh, I guess that says bump. Let's see what the tag says. The Ski Barn. So this is an old hat probably at some kind of ski resort. Probably a place called Winter Place. But that's a really cool hat. This one should sell good just because of the the logo and the you know the graphics and also the uh, the way that it's black with the pink that's uh, kind of like you know a popular color combination all right then I got this one which is a Marlboro hat so it says signature team adventure team or no adventure team that's what it says Marlboro and it has the uh, Marlboro uh, embroidery on the side and it's got Marlboro embroidery on the back it is a, stra a strap back it appears to be like that's real leather and it is actually made by Marlboro. So that's a really cool one. Um, I sold one kind of like this a while back. I think I got like 20 bucks for it, maybe 15. I can't really remember, but it sold pretty quick. Marlboro stuff uh, is pretty cool. I guess it's coming back. People are starting to really sport this stuff again. So yeah, those are all of the hats that I picked up. So let me go ahead and move those out of the way. Okay, the other items that I picked up, I picked up this KitchenAid mixer. It has the uh, the bowl and it has some attachments. I picked that up at the uh, flea market, the lady. 
said she did not test it and uh, I just bought it without testing it. I know I probably shouldn't have done that. I paid $15. I did not test it, but right after buying it, I walked over to an outlet. I plugged it up and I tested it and it worked perfectly fine. So this was a, a really good deal. Uh, I'm not really sure why she didn't test it. I don't really understand that, but hey, sometimes they make mistakes. Just like I talked about in my last video, you have to be ready to capitalize on people's mistakes. I picked up a Texas instrument. Uh, this is a TI-84 Plus C, silver edition. I paid three bucks for this. I tested it, it works. That's a pretty good deal. I have to look it up to see what it's gonna sell for. I bought this, uh, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. This is a Bosch. Uh, router. Let me get up with the camera. So I bought this Bosch router. It is actually brand new in the box. So I was surprised. I opened it up. The guy was like, it looks brand new. I said, oh yeah, most definitely. The cable was still wrapped up the same way that it should have come when it was brand new. It still had everything in the box completely, um, you know, factory sealed other than the box actually has been opened. Also, he threw in this which is a deluxe router guide. He threw this in for free. So I gave him 10 bucks for this and he threw this in for free. So I figured that was a pretty good deal. I didn't look it up. Again, this is one of the type of items that I know I'm gonna be able to make money on. I don't think it's worth a lot of money. I have to look it up. But uh, no matter what, if it's not worth that much money, I'll throw it on Facebook Marketplace and somebody locally would love to have this and I'm gonna make a profit. The next item that I picked up, this is a, a pretty cool item, right? I was at a, um, a table that was full of watches and I asked the guy, how much are you asking for all of your watches? What kind of prices? He said, anything on that table that you're looking at is a dollar. So it took me a few minutes. I had to kind of go through a bunch of watches but after I went through, uh, you know, I probably spent maybe four or five minutes. I found this watch. And from the looks of it, immediately, I thought that I hit the jackpot because right when I seen it, I thought that it was a legit actual period piece, but it's not. But even though it's not an actual period piece, it is a boulevard and it is a 100% limited edition replica of a World War II hack watch. So even though it's a replica and even though it's not 100%, you know, time uh, period, from the actual time period of World War II. It is a, a limited edition replica, and I paid two bucks. I'll probably get 25 bucks for it, uh, maybe even 35. I'll clean, it, uh, I'll clean the crystal up. I'll clean the back of it up. I'll make sure that it's working properly. It has a really nice band, and uh, this should sell pretty quick. So be on the lookout for stuff like this. This is really cool stuff. Uh, just because smalls, I love smalls. I love jewelry, I love watches because this type of stuff really does sell fast if you have it priced right and it's super easy to ship. And most of the times, I never have problems with buyers that buy this type of stuff because they know what they're looking for if they're going online and they're typing in this model number or they're looking up for this watch. They know what they're looking for, so therefore, they know what they're gonna get. So that was a really good buy. Alrighty, so the next item that I picked up is this Type A2, you know, U.S. Air Force Army cockpit jacket made in the USA in really good condition. This jacket, I actually like it a lot. I might actually keep it. It's in really, really good condition. I've sold these before. Um, this one, because of the condition, I might keep this one. I like it a lot and it's in really good condition. So that was a really good find. I bought this from a clothing seller that was at the flea market. She had tons of clothing probably 2,000 pieces, all of it on clothing racks. And I started to look and I couldn't find anything and I was about to walk away. And she said, hey, I have a really nice jacket that you might be interested in because she's seen me looking at a Harley Davidson jacket. And I said, yeah, sure, let me see it. And she went to her van, she pulled the jacket out of her van. And she said, I don't know if this jacket is real, but it is really nice leather. And she showed it to me I said, yeah, it's really cool. I tried it on. I said, how much would you want for it? And she said, make me an offer. I don't really like to make people offers at, at flea markets. Uh, so I usually want them to tell me a price. But at this time, I was like, forget it. I'm going to make her an offer. So I said 20 bucks. She said, sure, I'll take $20. And the deal was sealed. And I walked away with a really good jacket. Um, for all of you, you know, that love these style jackets, you know that this is a really good jacket. The way that it fits, the way that it feels. 
It's just one of the best jackets ever made. I've had a couple of these over the past couple of years, and I've always sold them. I never kept them. So I might actually keep this one because of the condition. I don't even think it's actually broke in yet. So anyways, that was a really good find. Okay, so the next find was this really nice motorcycle jacket. It's made by Triumph. It's a, it's got the full vents on the back. It is a 100% padded jacket. It's got the, the back pad. It's got the arm pads, the hips. Also, it comes with the removable liner. And I also have the pants that go with it as well. And that's what makes this, this deal extremely good because he had the actual pants. Now, these pants are matching. Uh, they're made by Triumph. They're a really good size. Uh, they also have the liner as well. So this, um, this was one of those deals that, you know, I had to really negotiate because when I first asked him how much he wanted for the set, he said $100. Obviously, I don't want to pay $100 for it, so I really had to negotiate, and I used a few different tactics, and I was unsuccessful. So finally, I decided to play the role of I'm not interested and I'm walking away. And luckily, that worked. That worked especially well with this guy because right as I walked away, he said, what are you willing to give me? I said, really, to be honest with you, I'm going to be at 40 bucks. 20 for the pants, 20 for the jacket. That's what I can offer. I can't go any higher than that. And the reason that I did this is because I honestly didn't know exactly how much this was going to sell for. I know that I've sold Triumph stuff before. I actually have a Triumph jacket right now listed on eBay. So I don't really know exactly this model. So I was kind of gambling, right? And I didn't want to whip my phone out and look it up because I didn't want him to, if it just so happened that this was like a $500 jacket, I didn't want him to see that and ask, you know, well, what is it selling for? So I basically just kind of gambled and said, you know, I'll do 20 bucks for the jacket, 20 bucks for the pants. And he kind of thought about it for a minute. And then I told him I would come back at the end of the day. And if he didn't, um, if he still had it, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll buy it for 40. And at that point, he didn't want to lose the deal. And he just said, give me 40 bucks. You can have it, this, that, and another. So this was a really good deal. I'm going to have to look it up. Like I said earlier, I haven't, you know, I haven't looked any of these items up really, but I'm almost certain that I'm going to be able to get at least 250 for the set. Based on my experience, I've sold pretty, you know, similar jackets to this for about 150. And I think the matching set makes a really good, uh, you know, impression when somebody's trying to buy pants and a jacket and it's made by Triumph. I think for sure I should be able to get at least 200 bucks. So that was a really good buy. 40 into 200, possibly 250. Okay, the other two items that I picked up was these two plastic toolboxes. Now these are nothing special. I bought them for myself, but I got two of those. I paid them $5 each. And then I got these, uh, these Craftsman wrench sets. So there's 29 pieces. Um, basically just wrenches, craftsmen, and I bought these for myself as well. I'm a really big tool guy. I have a really big tool collection, I guess you could call it, and uh, they were extremely cheap. He only charged me $5 each for the set, so that was a really good deal. Okay, so this is probably one of the coolest items that I found yesterday. you probably seen the box earlier in the video. This is a vintage Zip D RV folding chair set comes with two chairs I got the original box and the the chairs are brand new they have never been used they're in mint mint condition I have found these before used and I have sold these before you know on the used market but these are new old stock with the original box look these up they can definitely range from a hundred to four hundred dollars depending on the condition depending on the color and the, uh, the pattern. And, um, you know, I'm not 100% sure, but if I'm not mistaking, these, sh these chairs were either sold or given out to people that bought Airstreams back in the day. So they're just super cool foldable chairs, and I cannot believe that I found them at a flea market. They were sitting right out in the open. Nobody picked them up. The, the guy that sold me the chairs said that I was the first person to pick up this box and look at them. And once I seen what they are or, or what they were, I immediately knew that I want them. 
I asked the guy how much. He said, oh, you know, I don't really know. What, what do you think? What do you think? And what would you offer me for them? He said, I know that they can, you know, sell for a lot of money online. And right when he said that, I thought, well, this guy's going to want a lot of money. So he ended up saying $40. I counted offered at $30 and then I bought them. So I paid 30 bucks for the foldable chairs. Hopefully these are going to sell really good before I list them on Facebook or, or I might even list them on eBay. Before I do so, I'm actually going to take them over to a, a friend of mine who owns an RV shop. He restores vintage Airstream RVs and campers and things like that. I'm going to take him over there and I'm going to see if he's willing to buy them from me. I'll give him a really good deal and then that way I don't have to I don't have to ship them, I don't have to list them or do anything. This was a really good find. Be on the lookout for these. They're really really cool and they're coming back in style and people want them. People want to collect them, people want to use them. I just can't believe that I found them brand new in the box. Okay, so these are the last two items that I that I'm going to show you guys today. This item is probably the biggest score of the day. This is a Saddleback purse, and it is been, it is made by the Saddleback Company, and uh, I think they're out of uh, Fort Worth, Texas. They make purses. Um, they make other handbags, briefcases, things like that. Um, it says Saddleback right here. Um, it also, on the inside, has their little logo. Really nice. I... I haven't really done a lot of research yet to figure out exactly, you know, what this model purse sells for or this design. I think it's probably one of their older designs, but uh, it, you can tell it's really quality leather. Um, you can tell that the, you know, the craftsmanship and the, the amount of time it took to make this item is, is unbelievable. So anyways, this was a really pretty, pretty interesting story, but I'm not going to, you know, bore you with the story. Uh, but I picked this up at the flea market yesterday. And uh, they wanted a, a little bit too much for the purse at first. They, they had it priced pretty high. She knew what she had. But uh, at the end of the day, I was able to negotiate. It took a little bit of time, probably 15, 20 minutes of negotiating. And I ended up using a, an old tactic that I talk about all the time and that I just recently talked about earlier, which is bundling. So basically, I put the purse down and I acted like I was not interested. And I basically just, you know, said, hey, do you have any other leather purses? And she said, sure, I'll show you another one, but I don't know who the other one is made by. I don't know anything about it, but I'll show it to you. So she pulled this one out. Now, by the looks of it, this one might not look that nice, right? It might not be uh, as appealing as that other purse, but this is definitely a really nice bag. This is 100% leather. It is extremely thick leather, just like that. The inside is in really good condition. It has these multiple leather uh, pockets on the inside. It's very thick and industrial. It has this really big, thick, really big uh, zipper. On the front, it just has this little plaque that says the leathershop.com moose made in the USA. So I did a little bit of research and it appears that this company makes really high-end leather bags, briefcases, and purses. Very similar to this company. Um, and I've seen a few of these uh, on the internet for sale. I've seen a few of them that have sold. And so I'm hoping to get a pretty good amount for this purse. Uh, I'm not even really sure if it's a purse, if that's what they're going to call it. But I think so. And uh, this one, same, same goes for this one. I, I'm not 100% sure right now how much I'm going to be able to get for it. It's in really good condition. I don't even think it was really used. The inside is in magnificent condition. So uh, I'm going to probably list this on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, because I do live right near Ocala and there is a lot of very big horse communities. Uh, there is a, a really big, uh, you know, thoroughbred uh, horse community in Ocala. There's lots of farms and this might actually sell on Facebook Marketplace pretty fast. So I'm going to try to do that first. But uh, yeah, you need to do some research. Look up the Saddleback Company and uh, be on the lookout for these. These are extremely nice. And one thing that I did notice is people might pick this up and immediately think that it's cheap because of how thick and, and kind of industrial filling it has. It doesn't have a filling like a, like a designer brand Louis Vuitton or a Coach where it's like very thin, soft leather. It doesn't have that filling, so it might appear to you that it's extremely cheap in the terms of like a knockoff or like something made in Taiwan or Japan or China or something. 
you know, it's not. This is made in America, uh, at least by my research. They're, they're stationed, or they're, I think they're in Fort Worth, Texas, but they might, you know, contract out with the company. But as far as I know, I think that it's made in America. But uh, it's just really good quality stuff. Take a look online, look it up, the Saddleback Company. And then also take a look at the leathershop.com and look up some of the older stuff. I, th I think that they still make everything in America. That's really good. But uh, this, this one's a pretty good fetch. So you might be asking, Chad, what did you pay for both of them? So I ended up paying $45 for both purses, which to me, I think is a really good deal. I think I'm going to be able to make some pretty good money. And uh, this is the type of stuff that I love to find. I'm out there sourcing and trying to find items that other people missed. Other resellers probably walked right past this and they didn't think twice about it. Same goes for this one. That's what I'm here for, is to buy and capitalize on what others don't know or understand. Knowledge is king. I talk about it all the time in my videos. Well, that's the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for coming and watching another one of my videos. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Go down and give this video a big thumbs up. I am going to start putting out a lot more content, so you want to make sure that you're subscribed and make sure you have the little notifications turned on. Uh, hope you like the video. Hopefully, somebody out there watching learned something, or at least it was you know halfway educational or just halfway entertainment. It doesn't really matter to me why you watch my videos. I just appreciate it that you watch it. That's all you know. really boils down. But I do want to help as many people as possible. And uh, if you ever have any questions, if you ever want to just, you know, message me, ask me anything, talk to me, uh, you know, anything of that nature, you can always follow me on Instagram. You can always message me or you can go down in the comment section below and give me a, you know, a message or a question there. So anyways, until next time, I, uh, you know, hope that everybody is doing well. I hope that everybody has wonderful sales and uh, I can't wait to see y'all in my next video. We'll see what we're going to talk about next time. But until next time, folks, I'm out of here. Peace.